Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon. The Bold and the Beautiful Recap for July 16, 2024. The autopsy results are in. Everyone is reeling in the aftermath of Hollis' death in the Bold and the Beautiful Recap for July 16, 2024. We begin today at the hospital with tense music. Finn, Tanner Novlin, tells Lai Naomi Matsuda that Hollis, Hollis Thevu Chambers, died of a drug overdose, just like Tom, Clint Howard, Poppy, Romy Park, says it's tragic. But Lai says they were murdered, and she knows exactly who did it. At Forrester Creations, Brooke, Catherine Kelly Lang, reads the news about the murders and Ridge, Thorsten K., cracks a joke about the pizza business. Steffi, Jacqueline Missins Wood, says that they should be talking to the top suspect. At Il Giardino, Deacon, Scene Canan, does damage control, while Shyla Kimberlin Brown, looks on. He tells the caller that these weren't just employees, they were his friends. Ridge says he's not making light of the situation. He's making a point because the press likes scandals. Hope, Anika Noel, wants to know if Steffi is blaming her father for the deaths, but Steffi says it's easy to connect the dots. Deacon slams the phone down after saying he lost his friends. Shayla asks if this is going to be bad for the restaurant. Deacon wants to know what happened to his friends and she seems to know something. Lea says it's obvious what killed Tom and Hollis. They had the same drug in their systems. Both men worked with a woman who has a very unstable history. Shayla Carter killed those men. Poppy seems to breathe a sigh of relief that Lee isn't talking about her. Hope says her father wants to know what happened more than anyone. Steffi asks if it changes things that Shyla was the one who did it. Hope isn't defending Shyla given that Tom died of an overdose. Steffi wants to know if Hope wants them to keep an open mind about Shyla, but Hope admits that the men could have died because of Shyla. Shyla tells Deacon not to worry about the reporter because he had nothing to do with it. Deacon is overcome with grief. He was upstairs when Hollis died. Deacon doesn't want the attention from the media to overshadow their deaths. Nothing about the case adds up. Tom said he was sober when he died, but he doesn't know about Hollis. Was he sick or was he in the wrong place at the wrong time? Finn asks if Lai thinks Shyla did it. She starts to say that he shouldn't defend her, but he admits the idea crossed her mind. Poppy doesn't know Shyla, but based on her history it makes sense. Finn says that they have to keep an open mind given the drug epidemic in this country. Lei reminds him that they know Shyla is a murderer. She tried to kill Finn and Steffi, and she tried to kill Lee too. I'm absolutely certain Shyla Carter murdered those two men. Ridge reminds them that everyone warned Deacon about Shyla. Burke and Steffi agree, but Hope is stuck on Shyla's motive. Steffi says that Lee is overseeing Hollis' autopsy and Brooke knows that Lai will get answers. Steffi is determined to see that Shyla gets the punishment she deserves. Deacon says the restaurant was supposed to be their oasis and now it feels terrible. She says that it's possible that they were both tragic accidents. We'll know soon enough, Deacon says. He says his mind is going to some dark places and he thinks their deaths are anything but an accident. Lei says that Poppy agrees with her. She asks Finn his thoughts and he agrees that it would be short-sighted to ignore Shyla as a suspect. Lei points out that both men died of the same drug and that's why she's going to go to Il Giardino. She forbids him from going with him and putting his marriage at risk. Lee assures him that she can do it alone. Steffi knocks on the door and asks what happened. Lei reveals the results. Hollis was murdered by Shyla. Hope thinks back to her father telling her how much she means to him and how he asked Shyla to marry him. She thinks of all the other times people warned her about Shyla. Brooke interrupts and asks how she's doing. She admits she's worried about her father and she's so sad about Hollis. Ridge says they know why it happened. It's because Shyla came into Deacon's life. Hope wonders if it will raise more questions and Deacon will demand concrete answers before he believes it. Ridge says that all they can do is ensure that it never happens again, and that's why Steffi is right and that it's all about Shyla. 
Deacon says it all feels wrong and that there's something more to it. Tom died of an overdose, but he'd been turning his life around. Sheila says that she understands why he can't believe that they were just tragic accidents. She knows he's upset, but that doesn't mean they were murdered. She hugs him, but she doesn't look very sure. Steffi asks how Hollis died. Finn says that Hollis' death is suspicious, so it's hard to rule out a link. The Forrester mansion was draped in an eerie silence that had fallen over it ever since the shocking death of John Finn Finnegan. For days, the inhabitants had been living in a state of anxious anticipation, each whispering their theories and fears behind closed doors. Today, the tension would finally break as the autopsy results were set to be revealed. Scene 1. The Forrester Living Room. Steffi Forrester sat on the edge of the sofa, her eyes red and puffy from days of relentless crying. Her mother, Taylor Hayes, sat beside her, a comforting hand on her back. Ridge Forrester stood by the fireplace, his face a mask of worry and determination. Eric Forrester, the patriarch of the family, paced the room, his mind racing through memories of Finn and the hope he had once represented. Steffi, you need to stay strong. Taylor whispered, though her own voice wavered. We're going to get through this together. Steffi nodded, wiping away fresh tears. I just need to know what happened to him, Mom. I need to know why. At that moment, Carter Walton entered the room, holding a thick envelope marked with the coroner's seal. The air grew heavier with every step he took towards the center of the room. Everyone, Carter began, his voice somber, the results of Finn's autopsy have arrived. Scene 2. The Office of Forrester Creations Meanwhile, at Forrester Creations, the atmosphere was no less tense. Hope Logan sat at her desk, her work forgotten as she stared blankly at her computer screen. Beside her, Brooke Logan hovered, her concern for both Hope and Steffi etched clearly on her face. Hope, darling, Brooke said gently, I know this is hard, but we have to stay focused. The company needs us right now. Hope turned to her mother, her eyes reflecting a mixture of sorrow and determination. I know, Mom, but it's just so hard to concentrate when all I can think about is Finn and Steffi. They were so happy, and now, everything is falling apart. Brooke sighed, knowing there was little she could say to ease her daughter's pain. We just have to trust that the truth will come out. Whatever the autopsy reveals, it will give us some answers. Scene 3. Bill Spencer's Office Across town, Bill Spencer sat in his office, staring at the framed photos of his family on his desk. He had never been one to shy away from a fight, but this situation was different. Finn had been a good man, and his sudden death had left a void that was hard to ignore. Justin Barber entered the office, a look of urgency on his face. Bill, I just got word that the autopsy results are in. Carter has them. Bill leaned back in his chair, his mind racing. Good, it's about time we got some answers. Have our sources heard anything yet? Not yet, Justin replied, shaking his head, but I'll make sure we know as soon as the results are made public. Bill nodded, a steely determination in his eyes. Make it happen, Justin. We need to know what really happened to Finn. Scene 4. The Forester Living Room. Back at the Forester Mansion, the family gathered around Carter as he carefully opened the envelope. The silence was deafening, each person holding their breath in anticipation. Carter cleared his throat, glancing up at the family before he began to read. The official cause of death for John Finnegan is acute poisoning. Fasps filled the room as the words hung in the air. Steffi clutched Taylor's hand, her heart pounding. Poisoning. How is that possible? Carter continued. The report indicates that Finn ingested a lethal dose of a rare toxin, one that is not commonly found in household items or medications. The authorities are treating this as a homicide. Ridge's face hardened, his protective instincts kicking in. Who would do this to Finn? And why? Eric shook his head, his eyes filled with sorrow and disbelief. We need to find out who had access to this toxin and who would have a motive to harm Finn. Scene 5, Shyla Carter's Hideout In a shadowy, hidden location, 
Shyla Carter sat in front of a television, watching the news coverage of Finn's autopsy results. A twisted smile played on her lips as she listened to the report of his poisoning. So that they finally figured it out, Shyla murmured to herself. But they have no idea what's coming next. Shyla's eyes gleamed with a mixture of satisfaction and madness. She had always been a master at manipulating those around her, and this time was no different. The pieces were falling into place, just as she had planned.